tradition of finding and amplifying the best ideas. It's a great media experiment. So if we were a standard media company, we would say, we want to spread ideas. We're going to come up with the great ideas, and then we will disseminate them to the people. But we're not a standard media organization. We're taking an entirely new approach, a radically open approach. We're saying, we want to find that we have some good ideas. We're not dumb. But we would like to find the best ideas on this planet and, and, and engage some of the smartest and most um, um, just ambitious and brilliant and ingenious people to help us find these ideas, film them well, amplify them. But it's not even just about filming. It's just about figuring out all the ways that we can find these great ideas and bring them out to the world. And you are essential in this process. So over the next year, even more and more, we're going to be finding ways to engage you in that and to think about how do we together curate the best ideas in the world. If TED is the, newspaper, the front page of the newspaper of the world, what ideas belong on the front page of that newspaper? That's the way that we think about our work, and that's the way we want you to start thinking about it. Because when, when, we, when we think about what to put on that newspaper that is TED, we think about what you're doing. And my awesome colleague, uh, Emily McManus, is going to talk to you more about that. But I want to bring it back to the process of finding and preparing your speakers, because that's kind of the bread and butter of what we do at TED in terms of putting together an event. And so the first step of that is finding and booking your speakers. And what I want to encourage you to do on that front is don't, not to think about curating speakers, but to think about curating talks. It's not just about getting a name. It's not just about getting someone who's famous in your community or who you've always wanted to meet. It's thinking about what does this person have to say to my audience and maybe to a global audience that's new and that's interesting and that's inspiring and engaging. And from the moment you invite them, don't just invite them to come to your event. Invite them with um, a purpose. Here's what I'd like you to speak about. And you don't have to know exactly what you want to speak about. You don't have to force them into a box. But tell them, I want you to speak passionately about this project because this project really fascinates me. Or I want you to talk to the broader mission of your organization and bring them in that way. And from that first step, we now go into sort of how do you prepare a speaker? And often, some of you have heard me say this before, uh, when asked kind of how do you get a great talk out of your speaker, there's three steps, and it's preparation, preparation, and preparation. Like everything that happens to make a TED Talk great is just all about preparation. And I think the, the single most important thing you, have to, you can do there is from the moment you engage a speaker, set their expectations and set them pretty high in terms of what you will be asking from them. You're not just asking them to show up on a certain date. You're asking them to engage in a process with you of, of coming up with the best talk that they can. And lay that out from the beginning, that you'll be expecting them to, um, to, uh, uh, to engage with you in this way. And kind of lay out some of the ground rules. There are a number of different ways that we do this at TED. And by the way, we face this all the time with every speaker. I mean, if you're reaching out to somebody who is like a Michael Tilson Thomas or you know, an Andrew Stanton, they are super busy people and they talk all the time and they think that they already know how to do everything they need to do. And it's a really um, a serious process of engaging with them to convince them that this is actually a different kind of talk. And so a couple of things that really work for us is first of all to set those expectations. There are different ways that um, you can engage with the speaker ahead of time. You might want to ask them to, you'll probably want to have a phone call with them to talk through what they're thinking about speaking about. We usually do that and then try to guide them toward what we think is the most intriguing idea, what we think will really work on the stage. We might ask them to submit slides. Uh, we might ask them to uh, send an outline or a script. Um, we usually will ask them to commit. Some of them will rehearse with us ahead of time. Most of them rehearse on site. You don't have to do all of those things, but kind of come up with your game plan for what works for you so that you can be engaging with the speaker from the first moment that you reach out to them. And again, so important to set those expectations so they know, oh, this isn't just a speaking engagement, it's actually a, a process. The second thing is to keep them on track. Um, so we'll do that through slides, through, through, through the phone calls, through the rehearsal, but also to give them direction. So help them understand what a TED Talk is. And this is one of the most challenging parts, I think, about curating a TED event. We're all learning this together. I mean, in many ways, I, I came from a newspaper background originally, and I sometimes think of the process of working with speakers as very akin to an editor-writer relationship. The speaker is the writer, and the curator is the editor, and they have ideas, but you have to help form them. You have to kind of guide them toward your audience. And um, that's probably new to a lot of you, and we're still learning itself. At every conference we do, I learn more and more, and I learn by working with each speaker, and I learn by listening to Chris when he works with speakers, or Kelly, and I learn from many of you when you're talking about how you've engaged with different speakers. Because there's no one good TED Talk. It's not like you're trying to guide them toward a one particular model. You're trying to draw out their best TED Talk. And a couple of ways to do that um, are, first of all, to use the TED Commandments. 
So the Ten Commandments give a pretty good guideline of important things for speakers to remember. My, um, some of my favorite Ten Commandments include um, no selling from the stage, and um, that it's more of a concept than the, the specific. Meaning, when you, if you're going to tell us about your mission, don't talk to us just about your company. Don't talk to us just about your book. Um, don't overplay your own accomplishments. Don't ask us for money outright. Inspire us. Um, and so that's, that's often a process with speakers. And the reason that, that can be difficult with them is that they're used to selling. That is usually the reason that they go out into the world. They're used to giving boardroom pitches. They're used to giving keynotes where all they want really is you to buy their product or invest in their company or in their, their nonprofit or to somehow buy into their idea. And with TED, it's much more of a soft persuasion. And what we'll often try to do is get um, speakers to step back from don't sell, don't be in your like salesman mode, and also don't be in your activist mode. Like an activist mode really like that kind of charge, like really that tone of voice doesn't work very well at TED. What works is fascination, curiosity. Don't, um, don't, don't guilt us into it, don't charge us into it, don't like swindle us into it, just persuade us and inspire us and like, get our curiosity sparked. And that's how, that's how you win in a TED Talk, is by lighting, lighting up the eyes of the, of the audience. And again, you can come back to the TED Commandments to help you in kind of guiding that speaker um, uh, uh, to get that great talk out of Another thing that you want to do is to um, force them to rehearse. Most speakers won't want to rehearse. They don't think they need it. Um, they do. And actually, most of the best speakers know that they need to rehearse. So we had, I had a great moment at um, a salon we held around a year and a half ago where all of the other speakers were marveling at Hans Roslin. You know Hans Roslin, the Swedish professor of global statistics. He's done like six talks. They're combined. That he's the most popular speaker on the site, which is outrageous for a Swedish professor, professor of global health. <laughs> but um, he rehearses like a madman. He will take every second you can give him on stage, so he gets every single thing um, exactly right. And he will run it over and over and over again until you physically force him from the stage. And the other speakers were, were really kind of struck by this. And they were all experienced speakers, but it really kind of sunk into them. Oh, right. That's actually how you deliver a great TED Talk. It is by rehearsing. There's a couple of reasons that you need them to rehearse. One is that even at that last moment, um, you can often elevate a TED Talk. You can take a bad talk and make it good. You can take a good talk and make it great. You can make a great talk and make it outstanding. Just by catching little things for the speaker, like, um, gosh, you mentioned your mom there. I, I kind of want to see a photo of her. Do you have a photo of her? Let's put a photo of her on the stage. Or telling them, gosh, that you're starting with a really boring story when you have all interesting stories after that. Maybe you should start with the, the interesting story. Um, you know, but there are a lot of little things like that that you can catch in rehearsal. It's also really important to the speaker because it gets them comfortable in the space. They're going to be much more confident if they've already stood on your stage before. And it also allows you to rehearse out all of the technical kinks. So we're in speaker rehearsals for the past two days, and almost every speaker is something that the sound doesn't play, the video doesn't play, and I say over and over, that's what rehearsals are for. You know, of course we didn't get it right. We've never done it before. We need to run through it once. The final thing on that is to give them is what I think of as, uh, you know, you've, you've chosen your speakers, you've prepared your speakers, and now you need to care for your speakers. So once they arrive on site, they are in your care. And to step up on a TED stage, any TED stage, is, it is a monumental leap of faith. It takes an enormous amount of courage and uh, confidence, and it takes a lot out of you. And you actually do kind of need some people behind you saying, you're great, you can do it. You, you know, this audience wants to hear what you have to say, you're completely prepared, you're ready for it, they're ready to love you. Speakers, no matter where they are in their profession, they actually do need to hear that. And we see it here all the time. If you can be a Nobel laureate or a CEO, you still need somebody cheering you on ahead of time and telling you, you're going to be great, you did great. One final note on that is just my favorite note on um, stage direction. So I will tell you that this is what we tell every group of speakers. and. Um, and I will tell you. So it's, I, I always joke with speakers when we're rehearsing them um, to lighten it because they're very tense and they don't want to take an in input. I, I always joke with them that like, I tend to give stage direction. We know you're not actors, but let me give you some stage direction. And that's this. So most people when they're speaking, we have a tendency to move back and forth. So we don't really realize it, but we're, we kind of drift like this. And we might drift side to side or we might do a little like swing dance without, and people have no idea that they're doing this. So when you see your speakers doing this, what I always recommend is that, first of all, tell them. And tell them, I know you don't realize that you're doing this, but you're actually shifting. And that's fine. 
but you would actually appear so much more confident. And you can see it in me. Like when I'm talking like this, I, I probably look a little lofty to you. Like I'm not exactly sure what I'm talking about or what I'm doing. But when I stand still like this and I just ground myself on the stage and speak with my hands instead of moving with my feet, I just look so much.